Hello, you're watching Dukas Copy TV, and my interview today is all about the euro. Now, you might be thinking, not the euro again, but the fact is, it's a key currency for many countries now, and is one of the most traded currencies in the world since it entered the markets back in 1999. But just how much of an impact has it had on the countries who have adopted it as their main legal tender? And has it been a worthwhile experiment so far? Well, joining me on the line from London is Eric Neumeyer of the London School of Economics. First off, Mr Neumeyer, I know it's probably pretty difficult to ascertain the benefits the euro has brought to the countries that have and are continuing to adopt it. But have there been any benefits at all over these last 18 years? Sure, there have been benefits. If you think about it, what a common currency facilitates is international trade and foreign direct investment and also tourism. So there have definitely been some benefits. very hard to identify the size of these benefits because you have to sort of model it against the counterfactual, what would have happened in the absence of a common currency. But it's clear that the common currency takes away some uncertainty about currency movements we know that traders, we know that foreign investors like stability in uh, foreign exchange rates. So there has been some benefit. It's probably been a fairly small benefit. So let's add some context to all this. Why, in your opinion, do countries continue to enter the EU and take on the euro? Well, first of all, countries uh, are more keen to enter the EU than the uh, then adopt the, the euro. I think that has to be said. But you are right. Some countries are willing to adopt, uh, despite the, the recent crisis of the euro, still the euro. I think they see it as um, a sign of uh, maturity and belonging to the club. It is more sort of almost like a political decision rather than an economic decision. So they, they don't expect much of economic uh, benefit, but they think that you know, being part of the Eurozone means being part of the heart of the European Union. And that is, of course, important for them, particularly for the Eastern European ones. It's of the final stamp of approval for their transition from former communism to being, you know, a fully fledged European market economy. In some countries on the fringe of Europe, if you like, such as Latvia, who have recently been accepted into the Union, the cost of living is expected to actually go up when it adopts the Euro, making things harder for people. Why would a country accept the Euro if this is the case? Well, I'm not sure that that will actually happen. You know, uh, as the benefits of adopting the Euro have in the past been exaggerated, so probably the critics of the Euro also exaggerate these type of costs. The main cost of adopting the Euro is the loss of monetary flexibility. Having said that, you know, there may be a, a small... Uh, cost in terms of uh, slightly higher um, living standards, that, that could well happen. I think it is, you know, despite this, for, for the reasons that I've mentioned before, the, the benefit, almost symbolic, if you like, or, or political, is regarded as significant enough to justify these smaller costs. You know, it is being part of the heart of the European Union system. OK, if we all went back to our original currencies, such as the Deutschmark, the Krona, the Lira, the Pesa, for example, would it be financially viable to leave now, seeing as so many countries are that entrenched? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult um, to see how that would happen. I think it would have been possible, and it still is possible, I think, for one country or, say, a couple of uh, countries to exit the euro without there being major um, havoc created within Europe. But it's hard to see how the whole system can be sort of unraveled in, a, in an orderly rather than disorderly um, fashion. Um, so I guess, you know, once countries have adopted the euro, I mean, there is a good reason why they try and, and stick to it. Now, that does not mean that there was good reason to keep say, Greece in the euro at almost any cost. In fact, it would have been much better and much more beneficial to the euro as a whole if Greece had been able to exit 
uh, pretty much in in the beginning. Greece would be better off, and I think the euro would be better off if that had happened. Okay, that's all we've got time for on this subject for today. I'll be back tomorrow with author and president of the Public Finance Institute, Ellen Brown, as we take a closer look at the bankrupt city of Detroit. But until then, goodbye.